what check. term? I want you to clarify in what term. Do you do you call a deserter a guy who is a crumb or a bum, like I said before? Or do you call a deserter a guy who fights for what is right? That is my question. And when you answer that, I'll be able to answer you. My question is what do you call yourself? I call myself a deserter, but like I said before, I'm not a bum, I'm not a crumb. I'm fighting for what is right. I'm fighting for the freedom of the world, huh? I, I, don't, I don't like to see one big country like America throwing us all these small countries just for mineral rights. Look, look at Venezuela, if you want to, huh? Just for oil or something like that. It's great. Where, where have you, uh, and how have you developed your ideas on your country? Well, let, let's put it this way. I read uh, American papers. I read uh, papers from Vietnam. I read the grandma. And uh, it was uh, the communist revolution. The government came in, expropriated the valley, redistributed, redistributed the land to peasants, uh, and set up agricultural co-ops and so on. So it was a very, uh, they let only government there. was very little government then. But I could see where, as if the government wasn't willing to do this, I mean, the revolution would have continued. The fact that he stepped in with the liberal uh, progressive platform and uh, and did what was necessary, uh, you know, stopped the necessity of violence. But if you take a country like Guatemala, where two percent of the population owns eighty percent of the land, and you've got violence in the status quo, period, and uh, and and uh, you say, uh, uh, you know, how how you know. And, and if they aren't ready to relinquish the reins of power, you know, people dying uh, of, of starvation and so on, uh, diarrhea, you know, tremendous mortality rate from simple things like that. Philip, um, um, I'm sorry, but go on. I, I wanted to ask you and the others also what you call yourself, whether you use the term. Oh, you well, it, it's really, uh, it doesn't bother me if you want to call me a deserter, that's fine, but it's only a classification after 30 days the government is classifies you as a uh, deserter, but you're still not a deserter until you're proven such. I mean, if I, I returned to the Army uh, after four months, and uh, I wasn't classified as a deserter. They weren't charging me with they were charging me with uh, after without leave. Uh, and I think that they're doing that uh, up until a year and a half now. I mean, you need to be absent without leave for a year and a half and before they'll charge you with desertion. Unless, of course, you make some uh, definite moves like joining the Moscow or something like that. I mean, that's pretty... Uh, pretty obvious that you don't intend to return. How about uh, veterans? Uh, the uh, Navy addition to the Act. Uh, before I joined the service, I had attended two years at uh, Indiana University, uh, after which I was a school teacher for a year and a half. Um, I am Philip Wagner, a uh, former Peace Corps volunteer. And uh, I was in the Army six months, uh, applied for conscience objection two times, was denied both times. Uh, consequently, uh, I deserted from the Army in Texas, and I flew to Amsterdam and um, uh, made my way into uh, the organization here. And I uh, continued. I will stay here till the end of the war, at which time I... question on what you hope to achieve. Um, I... Uh after two months in the Army, I became what is uh, known as a resistor. And uh, I left the Army for the purposes of continuing this. And, uh, and I said I'll go back under the conditions I stated before. And uh, therefore, I wouldn't consider myself a deserter because a deserter leaves with the intention of never returning. And I will return to, with the complete and unconditional withdrawal of all troops. So I'm a resistor. Uh, could you? Tell me whether you call yourself. Oh, it, it, it really doesn't matter. I, uh, the phrase is a, it's a phrase. Uh, it doesn't matter to me what, they, what I'm called. I'm just trying to get something done. In Vietnam, specifically. Oh. This is row two. Here we go. Hey guys, how about letting the uh, Navy get in on the act? Okay? okay. Uh, I read Act 1, and uh, I was 
particularly impressed by uh, Phillips article, of course, and also uh, Dix. Uh, they have much personal conviction. They aren't just uh, spouting off words. Uh, these are ideas that they truly feel, and uh, if I can help at all, uh, that's what I'm here for. Uh, here are some ideas that I have for Acts 2, 3, and 4. I hope there aren't too many acts that are necessary, but uh, those are some ideas. Uh, I hope you can use any of them. Uh, if I'm accepted, I suggest uh, we change Rita to uh, R-I-T-A-F, change the Army to, Air to Armed Forces. You just have to wait and see. I guess. Right. Okay. Oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. While I'm at it, I might as well plug the bond. Uh, this is a paper put out by the GIs, the Army. But of course, uh, I know personally uh, many sailors who have read it. And of course, they are in the affirmative on their ideas. I'm sure that uh, Come on, many will be joining us. That's all I have to say for now. Mm -hmm. Would you like to give a name? Yeah, let's have introductions. Yeah. Oh. In a group uh, with, uh, with plenty of legal support that we've already made contact with in the States, uh, and we'll go to court and we'll fight it. And just as in France after the Algerian War, when the uh, troops who came, the deserters came back to France and were reinstated, animosity was uh, was given to them. Uh, we we're hoping for the same thing, and and I think we'll be seeing some major political changes after the war uh, in Vietnam, which I which I think should be over in about two years, as I say. Um, hopefully. Uh, uh, if it isn't over in two years, uh, it'll probably run into a land war with China, in which case uh, there's no point in any of us going home. Uh, my statement. Uh, I'm private. I am working full-time with American soldiers, American deserters. And as I stated before, I will go back to the, I will return to my base in Kitzigan, Germany, when there is a complete an unconditional withdrawal of all troops from Vietnam. I'm George. Uh, of course, uh, the situation in a classroom was, uh, I mean, I regretted, regretted having to leave it. And uh, of course, that wasn't much of a foundation to start my career in the Navy. Uh, while I was in the Navy, I, Red anti war day. And uh, finally, I just, well, finally, especially after reading in time, I'm trying to, uh, to your chair. And uh, I've been here since uh, around the 1st of May. It's two. It's two. Well, we're open for questioning if you have any questions. Yeah, I have one question. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't remember your identification, but the uh, sailor. I don't believe I, I mentioned it. I was uh, a Red Army third class, and uh, my service number is uh, B202678. I'd like to ask why you're still wearing a uniform. Uh, why? Well, it's not because I love the Navy. Um, the main reason I decided to wear it was uh, more or less to show my disgust for the entire outfit as well as the armed forces. I'm an ex extreme pacifist and I disagree with all military power. Uh, I have a beard, uh, a goatee, which is disallowed. I have long hair, which is disallowed. And I think that the structure of the armed forces, uh, the, the laws, uh, the rights of the, the sailors and the GIs uh, should go even as deep as that. 
these are just the, the minute details that are important to me. But, uh, I mean, if someone's going to haggle over a goatee, I mean, hell. Is your desertion then motivated not by objection to the war, but because of your dislike for the armed services? I, no, really, um, I would say that I deserted. I was primarily motivated because of this rebellious attitude to uh, authority. Stop. Oh, you, you stretched the point, but I was primarily motivated by uh, the rigors, the, the pressure. And it made me more aware of, uh, of, of more aware of, of facts that I saw around me, of the operation of a, of a ship, the operation of the people in it, which reflected the rest of the Navy. And that would reflect, of course, the, the entire armed forces. So the war really has nothing very much to do with it. I was not, I did not have, uh, much chance to read any literature. Uh, I had never heard of desertion until I read Time Magazine about the poor deserters. I, I'm sort of, in a way, following them. Can I, can I say something, please? Uh, when you refer to uh, the harassment of the Army, Navy, or Armed Forces, let's look back on World War II or one of the other big wars, and uh, let's see how much harassment was in those wars. Is it necessary when you're fighting for a just cause to have harassment in any force? If the men believe in, in, in the war that they are fighting in, is it a necessity to have harassment to add to that? And also, during the Second World War, did the American Army, I'm just speaking for myself, explicate the situation with the Nazis? Of course they did, but in the guerra now, excuse me, in the war now, it's the Vietnamese. They don't explicate. The size of the story, um, every Saturday morning in the Army, there are discussions with officers and they are told um, what the officers think the war is. Now we are going to send them a newspaper and tell them what we think the war is. Um, we are going. We are telling them uh, the conditions uh, that exist uh, at this time. Uh, the movement called Rita. Um, how we can help them. How we can send them literature. Uh, and uh, there are some, of course, uh, who are deserting, and some more who want to desert. And we are giving them information about uh, the best countries to go to. And. Uh, what they're going to find when they get there. Uh, the, <coughs> we think uh, that Sweden is probably the best country to go to because they give full uh, citizenship rights and uh, free education. They give them money to live on, about uh, $16 a week. And uh, the organizations, the anti-war organizations in Sweden are helping uh, other than the government. The next best place is France. Um, they, are, they give papers for residents and uh, for working and um, the assistance organizations that become once again. Switzerland is the third best. Um, they give papers and uh, working privileges and uh, the assistance for the organizations. I might add that, uh, that in Denmark we're going to be having some uh, test cases coming up and we're hoping to in, uh, in England and uh, we can expect uh, Denmark should be added to this list very shortly, and in the near future, I think uh, England will come over. I'm not sure why, but uh, what we're trying to do is is uh, we're coming above ground, so to speak, with with the information and uh, that that we can give to the American servicemen, and that would uh, we think uh necessarily fill in the gap the other side of the question you know uh what the other alternatives are what the other social social organizations are that exist uh that can help a guy i mean he's 18 years old the only structure the only social organizations he's ever seen has been uh you know those that have been presented to him uh by by the press by you know and he's in the army that's the only thing he sees uh, 
and and we're mining a pretty good uh, offensive now, I think, in as much as this today uh, in Stockholm, all of the deserters there, about 25, are meeting with all of the anti-war groups uh, in in Sweden, and. Uh, you know, we're, we're getting the ball going. We've only been in operation a few months now, but uh, the pace is picking up. Um, if you want to be parasols, you can distribute these in the newspaper. It was just printed uh, this morning. Um, I, we have been accused of... Uh, we have been accused of... Uh, trying to influence the thought of American soldiers, trying to uh, brainwash them, if you like. Uh, but um, we want to make clear that our purpose is um, just to let them know that uh, besides their officers who are pro-war, there are people in the world who are against the war. We want them to know something other than uh, A number of correspondents in a certain European city, which we're implored not to name, received telephone calls the other day from a mysterious person who uses a clandestine name, who might as well be called Mr. Cook. We all know him, and we know that he deals in American soldiers who've either gone over the hill or want to encourage their buddies to go over the hill. Mr. Cook's cause is the Vietnam War. He's on the other side. When we arrived at the rendezvous arranged by Mr. Cook, we found ourselves in a one half of a double living room, the other half of which we could not see because of a large bed sheet tacked across the opening. We'd been invited to attend the announcement of a new publication edited by ex-servicemen, Deserters, a publication aimed at encouraging disaffection in the American armed forces. The young Americans described their project and themselves. I uh, did some work inside the Army before I left and left only because uh, I have been court-martialed, and the officers and uh, uh, NCOs were watching me so closely that it was it was practically impossible to do anything more. I will stay here until the end of the war, at which time I I I hope we'll have enough enough people to return back. I intend to return back myself, and I'm hoping that we can get uh, 500 to 1,000 uh, additional GIs. After reading in Time magazine about the four deserters. Uh, off the Intrepid, uh, I decided to follow them. I thought that their cause was just, and I had some ideas of my own. Uh, I traveled here, and I received help, and uh, I hope I can help in return. My name is Cornell Heiselman, RA1682504. I deserted about a year ago. I left the Army in Germany, uh, went to Holland, and came on the usual route. Mm -hmm. Since I have been here, I have uh, helped write leaflets, worked with deserters, um, as we call it, babysitting, and just just uh, started to, to formulate my own way of thinking. For me, the, the war in Vietnam is definitely unjust. It's not even declared. And uh, I think after the war, the world will be a lot better off. That's about it. I'm PFC Terry Klug, RA1684493. I left the Army from uh, uh, Fort Bragg, North Carolina. I had orders to go to Vietnam, and uh, I thought better that I didn't. <laughs>